In this fourth example of the momentum transport, uh, we are dealing with two immiscible incompressible liquids that are flowing in the z directions in a horizontal thin slit of length L. So it has a length of L, the slit, and a width of W under the influence of a horizontal pressure gradient. P0 minus PL divided by L. The fl fluid flow rates are adjusted so that the slit is half filled. So this basically, if you see this, uh, this is the uh, boundary line. And um, the one on the top of this boundary line is basically a fluid 2, the less dense phase. And then the one below this line in here is a fluid 1, the more dense phase. The fluid is flowing sufficiently slow so that no instabilities occur, so that uh, the interface remains exactly planar. So this one is basically the separating boundary between the fluid 1, which is in the bottom, and then a fluid 2, which is on the top. Okay, so um, we have essentially two liquid in here. Okay, that's why um, we put in here more dense more viscose fluid on the bottom and then on the top is less dense less viscose fluid okay uh, the most important thing that we need to figure out next is the postulations and the postulation is um, quite similar with the previous example so that the the liquid is flowing on the z direction so that we have the z direction velocity and then the z direction velocity is a function of x so it basically change along the x directions in here so x is going up and down okay um and then um the next thing is that we don't have a velocity on the x direction so vx is equal to zero and then vy we also don't have a velocity on the y directions in here so Py is equal to 0 and then the pressure is a function of z so the pressure change as we go in the z direction um, if not then the fluid flow will not be logical because um, the fluid is flowing because of the pressure difference okay so then um, if we go back into the systems again and then look into our we take a, a fluid element, a slab of fluid elements with the rectangular shape on these directions with the thickness of delta x. Okay, so this slab is basically in here is our fluid shell element. Okay, then we can um, basically see a four different shear stress components. This one and then the one that basically goes out. Um, and then the one that is from the bottom go up and then the one that comes out from the from the upper part of your slab so the first component will be the rate of that momentum in across surface at z equal zero so this one is this basically this component in here the shear stress component in here and then we need to multiply by the area where this shear stress applies so this area refers to this particular uh, restored area in here which has a width of delta, um, the thickness of delta x, I mean, and then the width of w. So the area will be w delta x multiplied by the combined momentum flux zz at z equal 0. So that will be the in one, and then the out one is basically the same. The area is pretty much the same, but the it applies in the other um, opposing directions. So that's also the same. That will be W delta x multiplied by this combined momentum flux at z equal L. Okay, and then uh, we have another momentum component again from the bottom. Okay. So that basically applies along this 
particular surface area, the rested area in here, which is W multiplied by L. Okay, so this will be W multiplied by L. Combine momentum flux X, Z at X. And the one that is going in, and then we have the one that is basically going out as well. And the one that is going out is WL. Uh, combined momentum flux inspected at x plus delta x because as you can see in here um, this shear stress is the one that we are really interested in so that one is at particular location of x plus delta x okay um, then additionally we have a gravity force we want to check what is the gravity force that is acting in the direction of the flow, which is the z direction. And this one will be zero because um, z direction in here is a horizontal direction and no gravity is working on the horizontal direction. In here, right? Um, this the directions of the flow is in the z directions in here, so. The gravity does not act on the horizontal direction. Then the next thing uh, we need to figure out is the momentum balance uh, in by convective minus out by convective plus in by molecular minus out by molecular plus the force of the gravity. Then we just put in this term in here according to their respective terms in these equations. Okay, if we do that we have W delta X. This one, ZZ at Z equals 0 minus W delta X ZZ at Z equal L plus W L XZ at X minus W L xz at x plus delta x is equal zero okay then um we can break down the combined momentum fluxes into the respective components so the zz should be equal to pressure plus shear stress zz plus rho pz pz Remember that since we have this um, same subscript, first and the second subscript, meaning that the pressure will be uh, present in here. Okay, and then the other term that we have in here is this phi um, xz. So this will be equal to shear stress xz plus rho vx vz. Okay, and then um, we need to connect this with the postulation that we have on top in here. Okay, we notice in here that the Vx is equal to 0. So this term in here will be equal to 0 because Vx is equal 0. Okay, and then um, we can also get the definitions of this tau zz for the cylindrical and eh, for the Cartesian coordinates okay from the appendix or from your uh, week 2 lecture slides okay this will be multiplied by this and then uh, noticing that this one should be equal to 0 for incompressible fluid For example, uh, in this case, it's a liquid, so it's a incompressible fluid, basically. Okay, and then uh, this one is supposed to be zero because Vz is not a function of Z. Vz is a function of X. If you look into your postulations in here, okay, 
so then essentially this shear stress zz will be zero and then the next component that you need to check is the tau xz so this will be minus mu del vx per del z plus del vz per del x this will be equal to minus mu del vz per del x why because this one is equal to zero the first term because vx is equal to zero then we can continue substituting this these things into the uh, previous terms w delta x phi z z um, at z equals zero minus this z z at z equal l plus w l multiplied by this x z at x minus x z at x plus delta x equal to zero okay uh, we continue again and then we break down this z z at z equal zero into this pressure and then the convective component p plus rho vz vz at z equal l plus w l tau xz at x minus tau xz at x plus delta x um, should be equal to zero okay and then we keep on continuing this derivation um p naught plus rho vz vz minus pl minus rho vz vz plus wl tau xz x minus tau xz at x plus delta x equal zero and this will be equal to w delta x now we see in here this can be crossed with this mm. okay so we get the this one will be equal to p naught minus pl is equal to wl tau xz at x plus delta x minus tau xz at x and then this one should be defined by W L delta X then we will get P naught minus P L divided by L will be equal to tau XZ X plus delta X minus tau XZ X divided by delta X then we continue again now we take the limit of delta x approaching zero as we take this limit then um, this can we can simplify this further to d tau xz per dx will be equal to p naught minus pl divided by l okay then um, this equation eh, in here applies to both phase one and phase two so then you can integrate this d tau xz will be equal to p naught minus pl over l dx then remember that we have two phases so for the first phase tau xz1 will be equal to p naught minus pl divided by l x plus c1 
this one is uh, sorry I think I need to erase this one to make it clear C1 at phase 1 tau xz2 will be equal to p naught minus pl divided by l x plus c1 at the phase 2 okay um, then we have a boundary condition 1 we have actually four boundary conditions in here the first boundary conditions will be the bc1 at x equals 0 then uh, the shear stress on both uh, faces should be equal or we can um, say that uh, basically the momentum flux is continuous through the fluid solid interface then um, as a result of these boundary conditions then you will know that your c1 at the phase 1 is equal c1 at the phase 2 is equal to c1 then um, the next one is we can substitute the Newton's law of viscosity okay I'm stopping this video in here um, we'll continue the derivations in the next video thank you